Greetings everyone, and today I got another Gold Series amplifier to review. This is the Gold A314 amplifier which is a stereo version based in TPA3118 chip. I already reviewed the mono version on this channel so we'll see if the stereo version is good as well. So looking at the PCB design, this model looks premium as well. It has reverse polarity protection with complete output filter circuit. And it has a preamp stage here using the JFET TL074 op amp. So overall build quality is pretty good. Now let's proceed with its sound quality. Powering it on, the amplifier has very annoying pop-up sound. Same goes when powering it off. And yep, this thing lacks lower bass, having the same exact preamp circuit to the A543 amplifier. And this has the worst pop-up sound so far. I'll discuss more about its sound quality later. For now, we'll proceed with the power test. I've set up everything here, loading both channels with 4 ohms dummy load. RMS voltage measurement until clipping point at 1 kHz sine wave input. So starting at 12 volts DC supply, there's clipping. And I'm getting around 7.15 volts RMS drawing 32 watts total power from my power supply. So that was 7.15 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load and we got 12.78 watts RMS per channel at 12 volts DC. Total power is 25.56 watts with an efficiency of almost 80%. Now going up to 16 volts DC. There's clipping. We're getting 8.91 volts RMS while the output is turning on and off already. So that was 8.91 volts RMS squared divided by 4 ohms load. And we've got 19.84 watts RMS per channel at 16 volts DC. Very good. I tried a 20 volts DC supply and you can see that it's stripping already. I tried with 18 volts DC. And I got the cleanest peak at around 9.84 volts RMS, which equals to around 24 watts RMS. This is almost the same with the 3116. It's not continuous power because the chip keeps tripping. And here are the power ratings I got at different voltage level. Now for its sound quality, this has the same preamp circuit to the A543. That is why it lacks bass just a little bit. It roll off at around 100 Hz. 
So this model is only suitable for speaker sizes below 4 inches. You don't need very low bass for small speakers cause you'll not hear them anyway. The problem is when you use it with huge speakers. It will sound like a mid-highs amplifier unfortunately. I tried changing the input capacitor with a 10 microfarad one and it improved the bass response. The replaced capacitor value was 1 microfarad only. So is it worth it to use? Well for small speakers this is a good choice because of its power rating. Very good candidate for soundbar projects or other small speaker setup because it will not waste power to output very low bass since it's hard to reproduce anyway in small speakers. You can still modify this the hard way if you want. So for small speakers below 4 inches, I'll give it a rating of 9 out of 10. This is not suitable for large speakers if you need bassy ones. But if you have a subwoofer already, you can use this as a mid-high amplifier. So it's not that bad especially that you can get this for less than 3 USD. So that will be all for now. The link will be in the pinned comments below. You can ask questions below. Give this video a like and we'll do something else for the next one.